I'm just going to start this video off by saying sorry because I am a straight, white, upper middle class college student who knows very little about politics. He's about to go on a rant that kind of halfway is tangential to politics. I'm probably going to say shit that offends you. I'm sorry. Uh, don't talk about it in the comments, please. I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please. Representation in movies is a thing people talk about. And my thoughts on the matter have kind of always been that people blow it way out of proportion. I think, obviously, representation is representation of, of different ideas is good. I think just in general, like just to experience other people's experiences, I think that's just a good thing in general. Okay. Okay. You, you with me so far? Doesn't mean we need to have a black guy in everything or an Asian or trans or gay or whatever. Right? Okay. 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 Wait. Yeah. See, I just think the best actor should get the role, like the like whoever's best for the job. That doesn't necessarily mean the white actor should get it, I just mean the best. Uh, I think a good example of this, I've seen the first two episodes of Sex Education like a week ago, and the the gay friend is played by a black guy. Um, what's important to his character is that he's, he's gay. It's a very integral aspect of his personality and the way he acts and the way he behaves and how he interacts with the cast. It's a show about sex, so obviously having a gay character, I think, definitely adds to that show. Based on the first two episodes, the fact that he's black doesn't matter. He could be played by a white guy. It would probably probably be the same general experience. The only thing I'd say would be different would be just be a worse performance. The, the, the actor just fucking kills it. He just gets it perfectly. Just absolutely spot on the character. He just nails it. That's what I mean when I say the best guy should be for the role. Okay? Representation is good. Obviously, as the, the straight white upper middle class college student uh, i have a lot of characters i can relate to i don't need character i don't need the person who's the exact same as me all the time it can be fine every now and then i don't need it all the time i whatever is good whatever works but the only representation of a minority that i actually uh care about and w like actively want to see more of is disabled people and the reason why is Gonna be honest, I get that everyone hates the blacks and the gays and the transgenders or whatever, but purely narrative, artistic value, nothing to do with morality. There's kind of nowhere else you can, you can really go in terms of being different other than just you're not treated the same as a straight white guy. But I think if you're disabled, you just inherently must have a different perspective on the world, you know? I think the way you see the world might be a bit different if you literally can't see the world. I think that might be a, be a huge huge th just thing that I, I want to understand better and I think creates for interesting fiction. I bring all this up because uh, a couple of months ago I went to see this anime romantic melodrama uh, made by Studio Bones called Jose the Tiger and the Fish and it was okay. It was like the most 5 out of 10 movie and I was very disappointed in it. Basically, the, the whole appeal of this uh, story, as opposed to just any other romantic narrative, is just the girl's in a wheelchair and the guy has to look after her or whatever. And you might be thinking, oh, that's probably gonna lead to, like, a different worldview, and kind of? I'm gonna be honest, she's a bitch, and I didn't like the, the wheelchair girl at all. She was just kept complaining and bitching and moaning all the time. And I think a lot of that just has to do with her situation as a character of just being in a wheelchair and having people want to look after you, but you don't have to, you don't need their help. Which, the movie kind of explores, but not really. The farthest it really goes is the granny, who I think is just has a really poorly written character arc. Or not even arc, really, just character. The, the moment that defines her role in the movie is there's this part where she's talking to this person is like they're like oh you're kind of looking after your your wheelchair granddaughter or whatever way too much uh when you die she's gonna be fucked over and she's like yeah and she just sort of acknowledges that the way she's raising her grandchild is bad and doesn't allow for longevity at all really so it's like she knows what she's doing is wrong but she does it anyway and like i think the whole point of this was just to highlight that she was like she like knew that the guy was bringing her out and then you experience more of the world than she had before the the wheelchair girl and why she was letting her her do that but it's like why wouldn't she? 
if you know what you're doing is wrong, why would you why would you keep doing it? And my issue with this isn't that I don't think this event happens. Like I'm just thinking in terms of like the whole helicopter parenting stuff that we see a lot more nowadays. And that's just like for having a normal kid. I'd say if your kid can't walk, you'd be a you'd be very conscious of them and you really you would just like be be way overprotective. I think this is probably a very serious issue that nobody really talks about that much because I think just for all parties involved, they don't even know it's really potentially a problem. But the way this movie handled it was the grandma realizes what she's doing is wrong, but she does it anyway, which is obviously no one, no one thinks of themselves as the bad guy. No one wants to be the dickhead, especially the dickhead to the person who can't even fucking walk you you're scum no one wants to be that person why would they make the granny be that person and this whole experience really reminded me of a silent voice which is a much better movie to do with disabled people a uh, silent voice for those of you who haven't seen it which i imagine is no one because this is an anime channel it's a very popular anime movie it's about a deaf girl who gets bullied and i think the best part of it is the prologue which establishes it and all that does is established the main character. The main character isn't deaf. The main character, when he was like 10, bullied a deaf girl. And then everyone's like, yo, that was the guy who bullied the deaf girl. We should stay away from him. He's a fucking dickhead, which is understandable, obviously. And what the first volume does is it allows you to genuinely empathize with the bully. And you totally understand if you're 10 years old. You make jokes, nobody gets hurt, everyone laughs at you. And what you did, you'd keep doing it. They, they gradually escalate because he gra- just wants to get people to laugh more and more and he just goes further and further to the line until he eventually crosses it. And that that's that's what made him known as the bully. So that's why I like that part of a silent voice because you you understand. It starts off just like he'll make a loud noise right behind her he- head and like she can't hear. It's very easy to just dehumanize these disabled people if like, well, they can't hear me so why would I be arse talking to them? And this is an issue that the movie brings up and is very good at establishing that the way we treat uh, disabled people are human is by viewing them as people and that we shouldn't just treat them differently uh, based on their disability. I think a much more cynical approach to, to this is uh, a weird Irish movie called Inside I'm Dancing from like 2002 or whatever. It has the guy who's the new Charles Xavier who's actually the young Charles Xavier, the, the prequel guy, and he's in a wheelchair. Basically, it's him and his other disabled friend and they're kind of both dickheads and the movie is like... They keep expecting everyone to do nice things for them because they're in a wheelchair. But, like, people stop doing nice things for them because they're dickheads and they feel entitled because they're in wheelchairs. And it's just this, this whole disabled people are people too. That That is a good and a bad thing because people are good and bad. So that was really all I wanted to say in this video. Just say the tiger and the fish was fine. It was like an okay romance where the girl's a bitch and the guy is just like a very bland, just generic nice guy. And it seemed to try to rely on the fact that she's disabled as a reason why this movie stands out from any other romance, but then didn't lean into that aspect. And I think that's kind of a fail. I think there's there's some movies like the like the the focus is on is on their different worldview. I think that is fine. And this movie marketed itself as that when it was really just like a generic romance, and they just used the girl in a wheelchair because why not? Which I guess is fine. I just expect more from the media I consume. And I ended up being very disappointed by a really underwhelming movie. And also... Wheelchairs. Subscribe, please.